Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Judd's Camp Notes. Oh, yeah. Coming at you. Oh, yeah. From Twin Cities Orthopedic Performance Center. Right there. Look at you. Judd is... Judd's in the bowels of the Vikings practice facility. Yep. I'm in in here. I'm eating their snacks, drinking their coffee. (laughs) I've come here to take, take, take. Wiping your feet on their rug. I'm just taking and taking and taking and getting answers for you. Reporting on their jobs, their livelihoods, criticizing their performance. Speculating about their employment, cutting players, even though they don't ask me to. Yeah. So we'll, this is this is going to be an unprecedented 2024 Judd's Camp Notes from the Vikings practice facility here. But before we do anything, this is the second annual, this week is the second annual Scornorth Power of Sports Auction benefiting the Courage Kenny Rehabilitation Institute. And all week long, we have several great items and experiences available to either buy or bid on at scornorth.com slash auction. Our goal is to raise at least $15,000 this week. You guys helped us raise about 2,500 yesterday on the first day. So we thank you for that. Courage Kenny works with children and adults who experience life altering injuries and disabilities. And they offer a full range of innovative rehab therapy, uh, therapy to help get people back on track as much as possible. Physical, occupational, speech therapy, uh, all sorts of information at scornorth.com slash auction. And on the YouTube channel, you can see some of the things we have up for bid right now. I'll throw the Vikings ones out there. Monday night football experience. Four tickets to see the Purple take on Chicago, courtesy of ESPN Radio. You also get, I believe it's a $200 gift certificate to Jester Concepts Restaurants. Dude. Burrow, Parlor. Oh, wow. Butcher and the Boar. My wife and I were there for restaurant week a couple weeks ago. Oh, my gosh. So good. So you can just have yourself a nice little Monday night Vikings versus Bears. Also... A purple daily bootleg T-shirt package is up for bid. So all of the shirts that we had prepared before the draft, there's one of each. Oh, wow. It's part of a package. These are one of ones. Bo leave. It's going to be May or it may be our year. I think that's what it was, right? Yeah, Um, yeah. killed that one. And a couple other ones that wound up not coming to fruition, but the shirts were ready. And there's other swag and merchandise in there, too. Plus, dinner with the Purple Daily crew. All of those Purple-related things available to bid on. In terms of buy it now, VIP suite tickets to see Aerosmith with me at the X later on this year. Executive balcony tickets to hang out with the Scornar Twin Show at a Twins game on September 11th. Those are buy it now. When they're gone, they're gone. Scornorth.com slash auction. Thank you for helping us raise money. Judd's Camp Notes. Where are we starting here today? Well, you know what? I, I think we should probably start with what we saw offensively. And full disclosure, too, score north, not just single teaming it out there yesterday. Double double or perhaps triple teaming it. Phil Mackey out there, Doogie out there, and yours truly. Um, and, and, Phil, you actually kept a very close eye on some of the defensive stuff, which I think that we should get to. Uh, but I'm ready whenever you want to put me in, Coach. I'm going to put I'm going to put you in soon. But I want to start with this. And I think we both agree, but so this practice, full pads, now full pads is not what it used to be. Like, I think we think, oh, full pads, they're really going to go. And they they did some stuff, but it wasn't like hardcore, very hot out there. But we both commented as we watched this practice on the sideline, it was as if Kevin O'Connell has heard enough about you don't run the ball. That practice largely, I thought, focused on the inside run on the running game, uh, my takeaway was Aaron Jones is going to play a pretty damn big role, and it really looks like, especially with Kirk gone, Phil, that the Vikings are going to go to uh, far more of a run-based attack than we've probably seen in Kevin's first two seasons. So it, it was like a two-hour practice, which is pretty standard for training camp. Thousands of fans in attendance ready to ready to be wowed by aerial attack, right? Kevin O'Connell's downfield yeah. passing attack. And what they were subject to was ground and pound meat and potatoes football. Now, the first hour was just a lot of individual stuff, and that's kind of the way it's been. 
So they really only devoted like maybe 45 or 50 minutes to seven on seven full team practice. They did go two minute at the end, which I don't want to jump on your notes. We can get to that. But I feel like just anecdotally, 75 to 80 percent of the plays were either run plays or play actions off of off of a run action of some kind. And it was it maybe even more than that. It was easily 60 to 70 percent run plays in practice. And they even had a portion full padded nine on seven where you take away the skill position players and it's just everyone knows it's a run for like 15 minutes of a full session. And and it wasn't like full go, full tackling or anything like that. Like maybe you would have seen 15, we 20 some years decent ago. decent hits but, though. But there's some popping. Yeah, some pads popping going cracking. On. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Some, some, uh, some contact beyond oh, what you would see in the shorts and shells. But yeah, it was, it was very much a bring your lunch pail type of practice compared to what you're used to so far. So I will give you this as well. Um, we're just short of a week into practices. That was there was um, shells on Saturday, full pads on m- Monday. A way too early bit of hyperbole. Aaron Jones is easily the most slithery, explosive back, including Cook. Dalvin Cook was in his heyday; it was fantastic. But I felt like his last year here, a little bit slowed down. Had some really nice runs, but I mean, he wasn't the Dalvin of, of old. We've talked a lot about what the problems were with the run game a year ago. Aaron Jones, I think, is the first back O'Connell has now who brings a dynamic that I think he's going to trust. And that's the difference between Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler. Ty Chandler is explosive, and he does a lot of things, and it's like, oh, man. But there's just a certain level of mistrust there. Aaron Jones, I think, has that, that trust. So I would say that the Vikings run game has never been this suited to be effective under O'Connell. Because when I watch him, and I didn't, you know, I watched him, Jones, against the Vikings quite a bit. And he was absolutely fabulous in that playoff game against the Cowboys. But I didn't really appreciate, it as I think it was your term, the slitheriness. Like he turns himself, he contorts himself. The way that, the way that he makes his way through the holes and, th- and stuff like that. I don't think we've seen that here in a while. So I think that there's a lot to potentially like, assuming the offensive line uh, holds up its end of the, of the bargain. I think there's a lot to like in this potential run game. Mm-hmm. I think I said about three, four years ago when we kind of relaunched Purple Daily with just us three that I had Dalvin Cook and Aaron Jones right neck and neck as each other in terms of running backs. And I would I would say at the time, Dalvin Cook was in his prime, but I wouldn't be upset if Aaron Jones was my starting running back. And he, make that, he made that Packers offense tick. And Matt LaFleur is a really good coach, but when Aaron Jones was in the lineup last year and and... I know Jordan Love balled out in the second half of the year, but when Aaron Jones was in it, that Packers offense was at a, a new level. And I am yeah. very eager to see this finally work for Kevin O'Connell because the running game has been his missing uh, missing link in this offensive stew so far. Yeah, because it felt like he realized that after the first year, Kevin O'Connell. And, and okay, we're going to go get Josh Oliver, going to run more heavy packages, more 12 personnel, which is an extra tight end on the field Football. than the previous year. Uh, but, you know, Dalvin Cook was gone and also had hit the age cliff. So I, I feel like if you're just looking at last year's failure in the run game, I don't know what the exact pie chart percentages are, but I think there's three slices of pie. There's the running back that they leaned on, Alexander Madison, was not a starting caliber NFL running back. Mm-hmm. And Ty Chandler, more explosive, but also still a fifth-round pick in his second year, maybe wasn't ready to be the the full-on starting bell cow running back. So just like lack of talent in the running back room was a slice of pie. Offensive line interior, not a great run blocking unit. People do over exaggerate how bad the Vikings offensive right. line is, but like Dalton Reisner, not known for his run blocking. I think this is why he, he has been uh, made a backup. Yeah. He's, he's actually really good in pass protection, right? And if for a guy that's so big and and you know you you see how he gets down the field uh, to finish off plays, he's just like PFF does not love him as a run blocker. And so that the, so I think interior of offensive line is a slice. But then like the third slice is just lack of commitment to running the ball. Which if you're Kevin O'Connell and Wes Phillips and you're crafting the offense, you say, well, because of the first two things you just said, we're not going to commit to just running into a brick wall every time. So. Uh, by upgrading the personnel in the running back room, by putting Blake Brandle in as a starter, they're hoping that that sparks something interior offensive line. 
and maybe that leads to more commitment and different play calling in the run game. We'll see. Absolutely. And with the quarterbacks that they're going to use, they can't not have a run game. I, there was a trust in Kirk, right? And you had Jefferson, and you knew Kirk could make the passes. And I think that you could get lazy with the run game because at the end, end of the day, you still trusted your offensive components. Well, that's not there, and we are going to transition to quarterbacks right now. It's time for Judd, his camp notes, snaps of the day. That's right, snap counts. Phil saw me. Binoculars, oh, yeah. binoculars. Oh, by the way, in hand. forgot to put this out on social. I took a picture of the man himself. Look at this. I'm just going to, you want to make me full screen here, Dex? Yeah. Look at this. This is Judd with his binoculars. Oh, wow. Scouring the practice field. Look at him. Yep. Yep. That posture. Yep. That's a guy. That's a man on a mission. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, I didn't see anybody else out there with binoculars. Okay. Uh-uh. There, was, there was one man with a notepad, a pen, and binoculars, and it yep. was the former lead Vikings beat writer of the Star Tribune. Exactly that's right. Cool. And that's why I can bring you things like snap counts right now. Very close yesterday. Again, I didn't. So I'm not sure about you, Phil. I, don't, I didn't see any seven on seven per se. I saw a ton of uh, situational, including, as you said at the end, the two minute drill, 11 on 11. So here are my snap counts. Darnold, 21. McCarthy, and this sort of reflects last Thursday, 18, so very close. Nick Mullins, eh, he took four. I don't know if Jaron Hall was here, but if he was, he didn't need to be. Poor Jaron Hall. I didn't see any Jaron Hall snaps. You didn't get any. You didn't get any. Okay, so in the 11-on-11 periods outside of the two-minute drill, Darnold, six of six. We'll get to this because there's there's some stuff here. Um, But in the... In the uh, two-minute drill, Sam Darnold was two of six, including a pass that was picked off by Cam Bynum on the first play, on first down. And I think he was at his own 35-yard line late game. I think there was technically 55 seconds left on the clock. Uh, Two of six. That's disturbing. That's a little bit disturbing. McCarthy, in the various 11-on-11 periods, five of six, including a pass that was tipped and that for the second time, in camp, he tried to catch. Two things on that. One, in a real game, bat that ball down. Don't try to catch that pass. He did He he did catch his own pass. Are we counting that as a completion? Yes, I'm counting okay. it at, as a completion, but he shouldn't try and do that. He should, in a real game, bat the ball down. You don't want to try to, to catch. Because now you lose 10 yards. And, and you're going to get blasted. Like, if you bat it down, much less chance yeah, he- that... That you get blasted. Sorry. He sorry. also he he caught it and then he ran right into Kevin O'Connell, and yeah. Kevin O'Connell I will say for a brief moment had a look of disgust on his face. Like what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Why are we catching our own pass here? But JJ is a very you know he's he thinks in his head I'm catching this and I'm housing it baby. I'm going to take this along the sidelines. Uh, another just quick real, real quick JJ McCarthy note. So I is your mic not working? Oh no, Judd's camp notes are silenced. Well, he's muted right now, so Judd, I think, yeah, you unplugged it. Hold on. Uh, just unmute yourself on the site, Judd. There we go. No, 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 no. I uh, touched you'll have my, to re- my mic. <laughs> come oh. out and come back in, Judd. Uh, Phil and I will hold down the, the snap counts. Because I, I have a J.J. McCarthy observation. So I got out there. I don't know. I was probably, I think I was the, this is a. A humble brag here, I guess. I think I was okay. the first person like through the media gate maybe 20 minutes before practice started because everybody else just like, you know, knows what time to actually show up because they're out there working their asses off. So I got I got intention like unintentionally got out there a little early and uh, there was like three players on the field. J.J. McCarthy comes walking out and he's like he's dabbing up Levi Drake Rodriguez and other guys like he's known them his whole life. You know, like they all have these like handshakes. Uh, I think it's it's very obvious how much of a connector and a relationship builder J.J. McCarthy is, even as a rookie. I will say that even having only been at like three practices. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's but you got to pick. Mic. You got to you got to so, select the right microphone. In we're we're gonna. Yeah, thank, wait, 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 wait. I'll I'll do so, this live. I'll, in in, I'll do... in Streamyard, Jed, hold on. In Streamyard, you'll see the gear, the setting. All right, I got we're gonna it. hit. We're gonna hit. Uh, yep, you got it. I, I got it. No, no. There I, we go. I, We're back. Yeah. I like hit a small portion of the mic. I lost you guys completely. I could see you. 
couldn't hear you. Got, you. you got to, that cord is finicky. I've got that same microphone. Yeah, I microphone. didn't realize it was so finicky. This cord's yeah. got to pick its game up. You know, I, th this is football. This is this is grinding time. Okay. I'm going to turn, turn you up a little I bit. Got I, I got, got him. him. I got him. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> Phil, I, I just heard what, what you were talking about, and you are right. McCarthy seems to be a connector. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Darnold doesn't seem to be the connector that J JJ is. JJ doesn't seem to be. And, and Darnold looks, I think he's just being himself. So he's not trying to like go, you know, hey, hey, guys. Uh, JJ seems to have that gene that I've always said. You can't walk into a locker room and say, I'm the quarterback. I'm going to lead this team. Like it's got to be genuine and guys have to want to follow you. And that's what I sense that he, he's got. But so in the two minute drill, this is very important. JJ McCarthy, 4 of 4, looked pretty damn good. And I mean, this is bang, 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 new system, no huddle. Um, clock he, running, it's all clock simulated. Running, one time out. Yeah. One time out, which he took. They got him into field goal position. He perfectly spiked the ball, two seconds left. Kevin O'Connell didn't allow Will Riker to try a field goal. Very disappointed. But I his, am too. Yeah. He, he led a really nice drive. Yeah, I thought Big Leg Bill was going to come out there and put a stamp on the end of that practice, but you know, I guess the day after ending the kicking competition, four practices in, I mean, he just was was taking a breather yesterday. But um, yeah, um, I, maybe this tr dovetails into like an edge rusher discussion because that was my main assignment right. working underneath the sports dad yesterday was to monitor the defensive line and the edge rushers, but. The play that was being celebrated the most, I think, by fans and everybody watching practice was Sam Darnold connecting full team down the field, two-minute drill, like a 40-yard pass. Again, I feel like once or twice every practice, he's good for just a 40 or a 50-yard bomb yeah. to somebody. So is that well. And I'm here to buzz kill it for Sam Darnold. I'm here to tell yeah. you because they're not – it's full pads, but they're not finishing tackles and they can't touch the quarterback. Right. And they ran – because the defense is also simulating two minutes, and they're putting out their must-pass formations. And Brian Flores doesn't care about the No, effect. he's dialing stuff <laughs> up. He's just stunting. He's like, it's great. So for, for the, the interception you're talking about on the first drive, the first play for Darnold, Cam Bynum picks off that pass. Well, they ran three edge rushers out there in a must-pass two-minute drill. So that was interesting. Here's your first look at three edge rushers. And then, okay. J.J. McCarthy gets his possession. Then they go back to Sam Darnold. If I'm, I think it was his second two-minute drill possession. It was, yes. Final one. And uh, the 40-yard pass should have been negated by Gabriel Murphy breaking through the line of scrimmage. I think it was on a twist. But it was Gabriel Murphy and I believe Jonathan Grenard lined up next to each other on the left side of the line of scrimmage. And then I think it was Dallas Turner maybe on the right side. Because Van it Ginkle was. wasn't in for that play. No, no, he he is he is being worked in very slowly. Look, like he's done some team stuff, but not much. So yeah. yes, you're correct. Van Ginkle, you're, yeah, you're talking about yeah. Yep. So um, so Gabriel Murphy was getting some run with like the number one defense just for a moment at the end, and he breaks through the line of scrimmage and absolutely would have obliterated Sam Darnold. But obviously, he just runs by him because you're not allowed to touch the quarterback. And then Darnold looks down the field, makes plays. So. Gabriel Murphy stood out in that moment and just his size, man. Like he's he's bigger than most of the other edge rushers when you just watch him walk around in pads. So worth noting, hey, nice job by Darnold finding someone down the field, but that play got blown up by undrafted rookie free agent from UCLA. Also, an interesting like thing that, that I don't think that we thought about at the time, but it really shows itself now in practices, Phil, is the um is the different um, profile body type that Flores wants in his ed edge guys like Patrick Jones is still he looks the part like and by, by the part I mean Daniil Hunter right just a massive man just nothing but muscle uh, but we talked about this yesterday a little bit like Dallas Turner Grenard these aren't mammoth muscle bound men they are probably just quicker like they're strong I'm not trying to indicate they're not strong but they are definitely quicker and shiftier mm -hmm. um and this just shows again what flores tried to do with guys that didn't necessarily fit his profile i'm not trying to say that you're glad hunter is gone i think it's interesting that with him gone you've replaced him with guys that you would not say hey that looks like the previous edge rusher who was a pro bowl player yeah
You're right. I mean, it's you look at Jihad Ward, for instance. He's more Daniil Hunter size. He's like six foot four, six foot five, two hundred. I think he's listed. Yeah, he's listed at 280, 285. Daniel Hunter was probably more in that 265 range. Mm -hmm. But he looks out of place next to the other edge rushers. You're like, who's this behemoth? Oh, it's it's Jihad Ward, and he's what edge rushers used to look like, I feel like. But mm -hmm. does it feel like ed premier edge rushers are getting smaller? But that's Mike, what the like, Vikings like, are telling you. Like, yeah. like Micah Parsons is not very big. Yep. yep. I mean, there's always going to be room for a, you know, a TJ or a JJ Watt-sized behemoth. But, yeah, speed, speed and agility seems to be the, the trend here. I think agility along the entire defensive line is becoming a thing. And, and it, it wasn't for a long time. But I think part of the – so not to defend him one bit because he was terrible, but Ed Donatel tried to use Hunter in different ways, drop him back into coverage. And we were all like – and this was not wrong to say, what are you doing? Like, he's really good at rushing the quarterback, but if he goes into a zone coverage, he you're basically taking away what makes him an outstanding player. You look at Dallas Turner, right? That's a guy who, if he lined up, you know, drop back into coverage, I don't think you're going to say, oh my God, that's a terrible thing. So, yes, I think that... As we more and more, and Flores is probably one of the uh, top guys when it comes to this, go to positionless football, you don't want guys that necessarily have to fit into he can only do this. So I agree yeah. with you. Hey, before we go further into Judd's camp notes here, let's take you to a faraway land. The Minnesota Renaissance Festival is helping to present Judd's camp notes. Talk about Vikings. Actual Vikings. Actual Vikings, yeah. You yeah. want to talk about rushing the passer. You'll see actual Vikings. You can see, as you see in the video, people juggling fire sticks. Open weekends starting August 17th through the end of September, plus Labor Day and Festival Friday. You can throw axes, wield swords, watch live armored combat jousting, which would be a great video for the Score North YouTube channel or the Purple Daily YouTube channel. Judd doing live no, no, armored no. combat jousting. And no axes for me either. Uh, enjoy tasty turkey legs, beer and wine, 16 stages of entertainment, and a huge marketplace. Discounted tickets at renaissancefest.com, the Minnesota Renaissance Festival. Actual Vikings, you can see them up close in yep. person. Yep. Uh, I don't know that Finch Home Solutions employs any actual Vikings, but they will help you with various things around your home. Absolutely, and and they do employ a lot of people, including uh, Cody Finch, who runs the show, who are huge fans of the Vikings. I'm at FinchHomeSolutions.com right now, and I am just looking at the electrical repairs capability of th these folks, and I'm going to tell you, it is everything. Service upgrade, electrical panels, circuit breakers, EV charging, lighting upgrades, indoor, outdoor. Uh, we're talking about the entire thing. Heck, you know what? It's getting to be, and it's not there yet, but it's getting to be fall, and there's no better time to get that hot tub that you've been thinking about than fall. Well, there's a lot of electrical work there. Finch Home Solutions can do it all. They want to make sure that your home is safe. And if if you do want to install something like a Whirlpool, they want to make sure it's done right. Finch Home Solutions does exactly uh, that. Check them out at finchhomesolutions.com. A great website, basically everything that you need to know about Finch, finchhomesolutions.com. And make sure that you tell them the guys from PD told you to contact them. Yes. Okay. Judd's Camp Notes. All right, Judge, Ca Judge Camp Notes, roll on. In my notable category, I have three things here. We uh, touched on this with Doogie on the scoop, but it's probably worth elaborating on here. Uh, and that's the fact that Jay Ward, a safety, who is, I think, a cinch to make the roster, was used at cornerback all day yesterday. Now, Jay Ward is 6'1". I would call him lanky. Like, I think he fits the profile of what Flores wants at cornerback. He, uh, in college, played corner, nickel corner, and the boundary corner. So uh, this is not a unusual move for him. I asked him, I said, I talked to him after practice. I said, did you play, I don't recall you playing corner at all last year in training camp. And he said, I did a little bit in one-on-one -on -one drills, but I never did it in like team drills. Well, he's doing that now. And you might ask, how does this fit in? Well, probably saw after we recorded uh, Purple Daily yesterday, the Vikings signed a defensive back named 
Bobby McCain, veteran guy, uh, was with the Giants and barely played. I think he played 16 snaps in 2023. Mm-hmm. He's um, a vet. He played for Flores. Now, Flores was still the coach with the Dolphins when McCain got released. I think it was May of 21. So it's not like he was the staple guy, but he did play for Brian. But we found out, he said that he is going to, and it sounds like Flores said the same thing, he, uh, McCain is going to play safety. McCain is 5'9", which profiles, I think, far more into what Flores would want at safety. 5'9", to me, in the Flores system, which hopes to, they can't right now, but hopes to play more man, is probably too small. So interesting that Ward has been kicked out the corner at 6'1", and McCain yeah. will be playing safety. And as I told both of you with Dukes, I don't think they're done yet. I think that there's still going to be one significant name we know, veteran corner, brought in i think mccain is a guy who they would like to take a look at but i do not think he's going to make the 53 shout out to uh by the way tyler fornis who kind of called this move yesterday morning before practice even started that jay ward moving back to cornerback which is a position he played in college could be beneficial and obviously make a ton of sense and that they, they need i mean they need bodies here like, they need as many people as possible. I agree with Judd. I think another veteran ad probably makes sense. Maybe that is Gilmore. Maybe that's a trade. We'll see. But Jay Ward, I think, trying out, going back to quarterback, pro- cornerback, probably a good idea for, for the defense at this point. Yeah. it's. Uh, I wrote down just in my notes. I was my little digital notes here. I should bring the notebooks. We can both have notebooks. But <laughs> I'm just going through my raw notes, and one of them was Jay Ward will stick his nose in there. Mm. Well, we saw I mean, him make a big hit. He, yeah, I mean, as big of a hit as you can have, but he, he kind of dove in and blew up a yep. run play around the edge. Yep. Little, little Antoine Winfield style kamikaze dive into traffic and blew up a run play. And I think if you go back and look at some of the scouting reports on him coming out of college, a guy who's willing to stick his nose in and do grimy things on defense is mm-hmm. part of his profile. So, mm-hmm. and by the way, like Brian Flores values versatility. With these chess pieces, a Josh Metellus, you can move around. So if you can play safety and cornerback, if you can play slot and outside, you know, Byron Murphy Jr., for instance, you're going to be valuable as long as Brian Flores is the coordinator. And I think that's why Jay Ward is rising up the ranks here. And a guy like Lewis Seen continues to fall because Lewis Seen clearly has not proven to be, to be versatile enough to play in Brian Flores' defense. And speaking of scene, he has not practiced now. The last two practices, which was the first practice in shells on Saturday, full pads on Monday. O'Connell is going to talk for the first time since early Saturday uh, out here today on Tuesday. So we'll find out. But, I mean, we already doubted that scene was going to make the roster when he was playing. And, you know, day one of training camp, he talked about this is my last chance, you know, blah, blah, blah. I get it. Um, and I don't know what's wrong, and it might be beyond his control. But as the late great Dennis Green once said, you can't make the club in a tub. So, boy, I, I mean, here's my problem. If he's hurt and can't play, I don't even know that, that you can trade him. Like, I, he needs to no. play in preseason games. What's his trade? His trade value now would just be I Vikings a- completely screwed up a first-round pick, well, and we have an ego, you know, Team X. Yeah, but I mean, I would take I would take a literal conditional seventh round pick if he plays a certain amount for a team. I mean, he's a former first round pick. If if he had played and it's like, okay, there's something there possibly, you know, you might trade a uh, <clears throat> excuse me, got choked up there, a sixth round pick or something. But that's not going to happen now. So I mean. But he like he hasn't even. I'm not like it's arguing old, with yeah. him. No, he I know wh- he hasn't put it. Jalen Rager was a bust leaving Philly, but it, you right. know what? You could put on the tape, right. and you could see nine or ten plays over two or three years with the Eagles where Jalen Rager flashed. Oh, look at him! If we can just feature him in these situations, Lewis. What has Lewis seen put on tape? Nothing, nothing. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying is like if he could play in a preseason game or two and show you something, and a team might say okay. But I mean, right now, I think the best case is he comes back, he plays some. You literally. Tra- you trade him for a conditional seventh round pick that isn't triggered unless he plays a certain amount of snaps. Yeah. But right now he's just going to be released. I mean, there's no, there's unfortunately no way around that. Yeah. No, that's, 
and, and yeah, maybe you'll get an update. They don't they don't have to put out injury reports during training camp. Kevin's so. pretty good about at least saying what's wrong. Yeah. As opposed to Zim, who would bristle and tell us not not uh, to a- ask him such questions because the hey, injury s- report's coming out. At some point, yeah. I'm just looking through the Mr. Mankato rosters here. Yes. I have, whenever you want it on this episode, I have a Mr. Mankato sleeper that we didn't draft. Okay. okay. That I saw I saw a couple things yesterday. I'm hmm. just about done here. So I got two more Yeah, you notes, go. You finish out. You go. And yeah. then you go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, take your time. For the for those <laughs> for those curious, uh, no, take your time, Judd. That's yeah, fine. That's fine. Yeah. How this team <laughs> plans to replace? I'll talk very slowly. Plans to replace T.J. Hawkinson, Johnny Munt, still very much, I think, in the Hawkinson role for now, and Nick Muse behind him. And Nick Muse. So oh, I, nice I pass, Nick Muse yeah, I think this is going to be my guy Tunyon. I don't see much. So I think this Ooh. is going to be for the opening day tight end who who catches passes. I think it's between Munt and Muse. Um, at this point in time, too, I would say that both are going to make the initial fifty-three. My final note: we have a second team offensive line. I was tracking the offensive lines for you yesterday. Uh, left to right, left tackle. Draft pick, Walter Rouse, who looks the part of a left tackle. Big guy, um, decent feet. Left guard, Henry Bird. Center, Dan Feeney, who, by the way, has the greatest mullet of all time and a mustache. It's outstanding. He it's, is yeah. he's essentially Joe Dirt's brother. Um, Dalton Reisner at right guard. And then Spencer Rowland at right tackle. And if you're like, who is that? He is actually, uh, Spencer is from Apple Valley and signed as an undrafted free agent, started his college career at Harvard, and then I think he was at North Carolina uh, and signed in the spring with the Vikings. But um, Dalton Reisner, very much second-team right guard and definitely a second-team guy. I think this goes back to the run game. I think that they think that if Brandle can protect the quarterback – that he's going to be a major upgrade in the run game. So I think the Brandle thing might be born out of that desire to have a guard who can uh, post decent grades, in this case PFF grades, at both against the pass and the run, unlike Dalton, who was really one-dimensional, good uh, pass protection, not great in the run game. Yeah, I, I it is interesting that he's getting zero run with the first team offense, but then on the other hand, he had half the season with the first team offense. And a different quarterback though, so right. you got a quarterback working with a new offensive line for, for in terms of like Sam Darnold's never worked with this offensive line. JJ McCarthy is working mostly with the twos, right? So they they do know what Dalton Reisner looks like, and the NFL has essentially formed their opinion on him. It you know, every team is looking for. Better offensive line help, except for maybe five. Like, there's probably five teams, the Lions, that are that are sitting there saying, we're great at this position right now. Um, and so for for him to test the market two years in a row yeah. and the feedback continue to be that, yeah, you're kind of a fringe starter, and now he's running with the twos. But if he winds up being a swing guy who has a ton of NFL starting experience. Good insurance. I think you'd feel you'd feel good about your depth going in, right? Absolutely. And and uh we, we didn't touch on, on this, but JJ McCarthy still yet to take a rep with the first team offense. So if you're curious about that. And you said you previewed on the scoop with Doogie since you're out there and yeah. you're going to be there for KOC's press conference that you're going to press him aggressively on this subject today. I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him. I'm going to say what's the plan for McCarthy? to take part in practice at some point in time, get some reps with the ones. I think it's a fair question. He's probably not going to say, but I am. But, like, we're now into training camp here, and at some yeah. point in time, it's, he's go, it's going to take place. But I will say that I firmly believe that Darnold is going to be the starting quarterback in week one. And, Phil, as you got a firsthand look at on Monday, he does need the work. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's a it, – it's weird. It's a balancing act because you're essentially trying to prepare a quarterback who's going to, to be your microwave short-term QB, but then you want to get a look at the 
other guy, but you don't really want to, or you're not pressuring that guy to start. So, like, this is a balance that we have not seen in a long time here. Uh, this is this is just an anecdotal eye test take that I'm about to give you, but this was my second full practice. I'll be out there again with you tomorrow. And just me watching, like, four hours of practice at this point in a full pad of practice, it looks like the reads are a little slow for Sam Darnold right now. Yes. It looks like the the defense is moving pretty fast, which should be expected. It's year two of Brian Flores. And even if it was year one, like he is sending some exotic things out there. There's three edge rushers, two lined up over here. It's like you're trying to decipher. So I, I, I totally get why the defense would be ahead of the offense, regardless of circumstance. But it does look like it's a it's a beat slow. There's some there's some sacks that would be counted if it was a regular season game. Um, and McCarthy, too. I mean, McCarthy is there's a couple times where he had to bail from the pocket and run or bail and throw a check down. I mean, the two minute drill success, he led them into field goal range. It was check downs mostly. It was, but that's get the ball out. Take your medicine. But it, yeah. lo- it looks a little slow for Sam Darnold. Just my eye test early on. The thing that concerns me the most about Darnold right now is he and Jefferson are not on the same page. Like like balls are behind Justin, those 20-yard passes are thrown into coverages or they're they're going to get him hurt. JJ in this case. Um the one thing with McCarthy that I will say, he's a two balls batted down at the line of scrimmage and if you go back and watch when the Vikings post throw uh um him throwing, an interesting thing is there's a lot of times he drops down three quarters which is you know in in the world of pat mahomes okay awesome but when you're at the line of scrimmage and the rush is coming you got to get up top like he's dropping and that's why the ball is being deflected so again this just goes to the long list of mechanical things that that have to be fixed so you gotta you gotta be happy when he plays well in practice but understand o'connell is going to judge a lot more than just playing well in practice it's like What's your preparation from a mechanical standpoint to play in games? Yeah. Judd's camp notes. Great That's work. That's what I got for you. That's what I got for you. Now, what's your uh, update? I'll give you my sleeper. Your sleeper, yeah. Just s- someone to keep an eye on here from what I saw watching Ed Rushers yesterday. And this sleeper is presented by oh. Federated Mutual Insurance Company. If you're a business owner out there, Purple Daily Faithful, You understand the importance of protecting your reputation, workplace, and employees, just like a great offensive line trying to protect against sleeper edge rushers. The team at Federated is ready to help your team by creating a custom lineup of industry-specific coverages and risk management services to help you stay on top of your game. Contact Federated at federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. The, um, The annual Federated Challenge, where they raise millions of dollars uh, four and a half million, I believe, this weekend raised, which is just crazy. I want to verify that. But um, yeah, $4.5 million raised for Big Brothers, Big Sisters at the annual Federated Challenge this weekend. So uh, they're doing great stuff to raise money for a great cause there. Uh, and then don't forget Park Tavern. Just a quick shout out. We're going to be there. It's it initially framed and still is as a Scorn Art Twin Show trade deadline watch party. But it could be a Judd's Camp Notes discussion as well heck yeah just a friendly hangout at park tavern in st louis park at four o'clock today on this tuesday if you're consuming this podcast before then five o'clock trade deadline six o'clock is when the twins play the mets we'll just be hanging out talking baseball talking football cheersing some drinks and enjoying uh enjoying the time so just someone to keep an eye on someone who flashed a couple times during team drills and individual workouts Undrafted free agent rookie out of Air Force, Bo Richter, number 98. Oh, yeah. So he's a six foot one, 248 pound edge rusher out of Air Force. Football. Like I said. Yep. Oh. At one point, he did one of those uh, kind of around the edge where he puts the hand on the ground and gets underneath the wing of the tackle. Oh, mercy. Look at you. To pressure a quarterback. Such a football name, too. And he's a little bit of an analytics darling in that PFF loved him at Air Force last year. Out of 506 qualified edge rushers in college football Division I last year, Bo Richter was the ninth highest graded player. So number one was Liatu Latu, but he was was 
Gabriel Murphy was 17th. And you go up a few spots to Bo Richter at ninth as an overall grade. Pass rushing grade, he was the fourth highest graded pass rusher in all of college football behind Laatu Latu and Chop Robinson, two names that you heard as first round guys. Yeah. Fordham, so, love Chop. Football. Just someone to keep an eye on. He had 55 pressures, which was top 15, tied with Dallas Turner in college football last year. Now, Air Force doesn't play the same schedule as Alabama or UCLA. I get that. But yeah. just a guy that kind of kind of stood out. Like who's and it was and I, I I didn't go in thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna watch Bo Richter. Bo Richter. I was like <laughs> I was like, who's ninety eight? Wow, that was oh, it's Bo Richter. Oh, you had to do the oh, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well that's genuine oh, then. <laughs> Who knows? So just keep an eye. Keep an All eye. Right. No, he went undrafted in our Mr. Mankato draft. But uh we'll see what he does once the preseason games start. Love it. Should, uh is Friday a good time for like the first power ranking update on Mr. Mankato? I think do so. A, do we need yeah, a little sure. bit more time or I was no, wondering I think, on No, we could do it. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Let's do it. Well, we could do it weekly after the preseason yeah, yeah. games weekly. there's going to be more movement. Absolutely, nice. yeah. I like it. Yeah, let's Sweet. do it. Judd's camp notes. Judd just posting up for like 8 hours today at Twin Cities Orthopedic Performance Center. Binoculars in hand. Him and KOC binging film together. Coffee, film. Coffee. But KFC doesn't drink coffee. He's just he, naturally that well, energetic. He, no, I bet he drinks coffee, but I bet it's filled with crap. I bet he snorts the beans. Well, that's what a football guy would do. Chops them up and just snorts Just the stays beans. awake, never football. sleeps. <laughs> Training camp starts. He doesn't sleep until mid-February. Purple Daily is your home for Daily Judd's Camp Notes. We have Write That Down predictions tomorrow. More camp notes throughout the week. Please click the subscribe button and the like button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple and Spotify also goes a long way to help us keep growing the show. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die.